here I am with Patrick and we are going to take a look at MechDeck. So MechDeck is a modular build your own robot battle game where we all assemble our mechs out of these little plastic pieces. These are 3D printed prototypes but the final product uh, will be injection molded plastic. Um, so how this works is, uh, where would be a good spot for the camera, like right here? So the back of the torso piece, you see this plug system. You see a leg piece, it's a little T-shape here. You slide that into the bottom. Same with the arms. And then finally the backpack plugs it all off. And you have your little miniature. So each of these parts has a card associated with it that are on the player mat in front of you. So for instance, this arm right here goes along with this card. You can see all of its stats and special abilities. Each of these parts has its own card with its own unique stats. There are 24 parts in the game with which you can build four complete robots. So it ends up being a two to four player game. Is this a fully competitive game or do you uh, rules for team as well? Oops. Uh, you can do team games. Uh, for these demos, I generally do a free-for-all, okay. but it's completely, uh, you can play a 2v2. It works perfectly fine for that. Um, so your torso is twisted. There you go. And you can apply a little bit more pressure than you probably feel comfortable with with these things. These, uh, this prototype material is very durable. decide which parts you get. Is, or is it going to be point by or are you going to be drafted? At the beginning of okay, so if you've played mech deck before, it would be a draft style pick for the parts. But since these are all new players and the, the whole PAX Prime environment is kind of hectic, I just set up these pre-assembled, pre-selected rather, okay. mech setups for people to play. So you can just jump right into the game and get a feel for gameplay. But yes, draft pick would be normally how you would play. Okay. Um, so this game is, is fairly simple in its mechanics. Uh, one of my driving goals in creating this was accessibility. So there are only three stats in the game. There's power, movement, and range. Uh, if you look at the center card in your player mat, the torso unit, you can see the number in the top right hand corner, the red little icon. Uh, it's either going to be a six or a seven, depending on which loadout you have. That's how much resources you have to spend on your various abilities. So that number corresponds to the amount of red cubes in the top right hand corner of the player mat. Uh, as you're playing the game, you would use these to activate your various abilities and attacks. So for instance, if I wanted to activate my laser sword, I would choose take two of these red cubes and move it over to the laser sword, and then I would be allowed to attack with it. You can use the same ability over and over again if you have the, the enough resources for it. So for instance, I could attack three times with my laser sword if someone was within range. Uh, the second stat is movement. So those come from your legs. Similar spot to where the power is in your torso. You'll see a little green icon. So this mech, for instance, has a movement of three. So I have three of these little green cubes. As I'm moving my robot across the battlefield, I would move these over one by one to legs to signify how much I have moved. Uh, different types of terrain will affect your movement and your shooting in various ways. I'll go in the terrain, I'll go into the terrain after I've described all the stats and how they interact with each other. Uh, after power and movement, we have range. So if you look at any of your, your weapon type parts, so normally they're going to be your arms, but some mechs have uh, other parts that have weapons built into it. So your drill module, for instance, can attack, or your turret harness torso has a weapon built into it. And for my particular loadout over here, I have a, a mortar backpack that can fire off shots. So if you look at the range number, the blue icon in the top, top right-hand corner of those cards, you can see how far away you can shoot. So for instance, if my mech was here and the person I wanted to fire at was here, uh, I would count the shortest path to my target to figure out the range. So here you count one, two, three, four. So this mech is four spaces away. I can hit it with my Blitz Grabber with a four range. Uh, 
Uh, like I said, it's shortest path, so if you're at an odd angle, you count one, two, three, four. After you've established that you are within range, then you would consider line of sight. Nothing in this game blocks line of sight outright, but things will uh, make the defender have a better chance of dodging the attack. So for instance, these forest tiles, or being behind one of these hills, or behind another robot, will give you bonuses to your defense roll. So, now that I've described all of the stats, I'm going to go into the terrain. There are five different types of terrain in the game. If you look in the bottom right hand side of your player mat, you can see brief descriptions of them all. Uh, the first one up is planes. So if you've ever played a war game before, this is pretty standard stuff. Your planes are flat, even terrain. They don't offer much resistance to movement or shooting. So you can walk one for one over these and there's no hindrance when you're firing over it. Next up is the water terrain. Um, so, there are two different types of terrain in this game that cost more than your base movement. Those are indicated by the green line around the hex. So you can see here the water and the hills. And on your little player mat, you can see that it has the appropriate amount of movement cubes to enter that hex listed there. So, water costs two to enter, but if you start your turn in water, it helps kind of cool your engines. So, you get an additional point of power on your following turn. If you, uh, on that turn, if you start in water. Uh, next up we have forests. Um, the trees, if you are shooting through a tree hex, the defender will get a, def a bonus to their roll. So, uh, for instance, this mech attacking this mech, they'll get plus one to their defense. They are cumulative, so if you're firing in this direction, they get plus three total from all of those. Uh, next up we have the hazard terrain. These are these orange crystal looking ones. It's kind of like a, imagine it as a raw, unrefined energy source that is hazardous to your mech if you stand on it for too long. So that kind of acts the opposite of the, uh, the water terrain. So if you start your turn in hazard, you get negative two power. It costs normal movement to walk into though. Finally, we have the hills terrain. Uh, if you want to walk on top of a hill, it costs two movement to get on, but once you're on there, you have the higher ground advantage. So you'll have plus one to all of your attack rolls against targets that are not on hills. Um, also, if you're behind a hill, such as here, and someone's trying to fire at you, the hill will offer a little bit of cover, so you'll get tough, plus two to your defense roll. The way combat is resolved in this game is after you've established range, line of sight, cover, all those things, the attacker would roll their dice, the defender would roll their dice, and you compare the numbers. So added up, the attacker rolled a 5, the defender rolled a 4, the attack is successful. The attacker has to equal to or roll above the defender's roll in order to deal a point of damage. Uh, once damage has been dealt, you would keep track of it on the bottom right hand corner of your player mat by moving it down this little track. And at the end of the round, after every player has gone, then damage gets dealt to your mech. So my reason for doing that is so that in a four player game, say everybody decides to shoot at one player, they still have a mech by the time it gets to their turn. So they can still use all of their abilities and stuff like that. So after everybody has gone, um, the, c the controller of the mech decides where that damage gets allocated. So say I've been dealt two damage so far, and um, I feel that I haven't been using my backpack as much as the other parts, so I'll allocate one point of damage to the backpack and flip that card over. If you notice, these cards have a blue side and a red side, and their stats get slightly worse as you flip the card over. So for instance, this mortar backpack normally only costs one power, it's with damage, it costs two power now. And uh, depending on the type of card, those stats will change. After a location has taken a second point of damage, you remove the card from your player mat and take the part whoops, off of the mech. And you can't use that part anymore. It's been destroyed. So effectively, uh, your mech has ten total hit points, two for each part, until you are eliminated from the game. Um, let's see. Finally, we have the Battle Fervor track at the, at the very top of the player mat up here. 
So this is meant to be a sort of catch-up mechanic in the game. Since mech deck is very Ameritrashy, random dice rolls, random card draws, chaos in the battlefield, um, the nature of that means that sometimes players can have bad luck and have bad dice rolls over and over again, and they'll feel like they're not doing as well as other players. So I wanted to put something into the game to allow people to try to get themselves into a better position and try to turn luck in their favor. So every time you miss an attack or you take a point of damage, you'll move this track up by one. At any point during your turn, you can then spend these points to get bonuses to your abilities. So that could be drawing more cards, adding bonuses to your attack rolls, adding more resources, or even re-rolling a missed attack if you have enough points. Uh, finally, we have a deck of cards. This is a communal deck of cards that everybody draws from. And there are a variety of types of abilities and maneuvers you can use. So, let's see, there are reaction cards, and then there are a whole variety of action cards. So, reactions always have the white border around them. Actions have a variety of colors, so there's red, dark gray, orange, green. Um, the type of border it has depends on what it does for your map. So since power has red color to it, cards that have to do with power have a red border around them. Same for movement, green. Dark gray is sort of an uncategorized type of ability, so you can throw down like a little sentry gun to help you out, throw out a smoke grenade, call in a bombing run, all sorts of crazy stuff. Those don't really fit into the stat categories. Uh, finally, we have these ones with the orange border. These are like those bombing runs that you're calling in. So this particular ability is called a heavy shelling attack. You would take some of these tokens and say, okay, I'm calling in the, the guns to aim here, here, and here. And on your following turn, these shots will land and deal damage. So if you look, it says one turn delay on it. That's how you, how you know how those work. So the way these cards work are, oh, uh, one last thing, the reaction cards you play on your opponent's turn, actions you play on your turn. So these are meant to be sort of counterattacks or defensive maneuvers. There's no limit to the amount of action cards you can play on your turn, but you can only play one reaction per attack made against you. If you're attacked three times, you can play three reaction cards if you have them. Uh, the way to get more cards is everybody starts with four cards in their hand at the beginning of the game, and at the end of every turn, if you have less than four cards in your hand, you'll draw back up to a total of four. There's no limit to the number of cards that you can have in your hand, it's just that if you have less than four, you'll draw back up to four. So, for instance, your pilot has a special ability where she gets to draw an extra card at the beginning of every turn to so have a little bit of a card advantage. Or if you have enough battle fervor, you can draw extra cards when you need them. So, and if I had ten battle fervor and I wanted to draw five cards all at once, I could do that? Yes. Okay. So everybody gets four cards to start with. So you can attack with them. And yeah. Um, to 
Did you read over all of your, your cards? Is there anything that you need me to explain further? There's a lot, of, everything has its own individual ability, so there's a lot of, a lot of crazy stuff in there. Um, for instance, my pilot uh, has a special ability where I can pick a signature move. Um, it's as if this pilot has been practicing with that one gun his entire life. So if I were to choose the laser sword, he always gets a plus one to that attack roll. Uh, yours, for instance, is a defensive type. So if you roll ones on the defense rolls, once per die, you can re-roll that one to try to get a better outcome. Yep. Um, yours is more straightforward. You just get an additional movement point, and yours gets the card advantage. The pilots are pretty fun because they kind of break the rules of the game in their own unique way and add a little bit more flavor to your mech. All set? On your turn, do you use all of your power, or do you take one Yes, action? this game promotes you using everything you have as fast and as often as you can. Okay. Because all of your power gets replenished at the beginning of your So it behooves turn. him to just use all of his power right now. Yeah, he wants to fire off his guns and use his cards as much as he can. Okay, so do I move first? Do I move power? There, there's no order in which you have to do things. So you could move one space, take a shot, move a couple more spaces, take a second shot, play some cards in any order you want. But once you activate your legs for that power, if you only move once, you don't have to then activate it again to take another. Correct, yeah. Until you've moved Moving does not inherently cost power. That's why it's a separate resource. Got it. But your legs all do have their own independent ability. Uh, so this is a special be... ability on top of being able to pass. Yes. Eli, can you reach my water over there? I think it's on, on the other side of her. Okay, and I can play uh, actions at any time. Too. Yep, no limit to the number of actions. And okay, so I'll place my uh, aim mod token. Thank you. So the way these tokens work, that appear on the battlefield as units, they don't get a defense roll, but we can shoot and destroy them. So all we have to do, all I would have to do if I wanted to blow that up, is get up close to that, give it an attack, and it'll be off the battlefield. Mechs, on the other hand, always get defense rolls. So the game's going to come with multiple parts to build a very variety of robots. How about pilots? Are there only going to be four? Or? There'll be seven total pilots. And I think that that will be one of the easiest stretch goals to increase the number of pilots. Since those don't have a plastic part associated with them, I can have more pilots and more fun stuff like that. Okay, so... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Mm -hmm. Got plus two for that. Each forest is just plus one. Oh, plus one. Yes. Negative one, so that's still... So this, does this, this doesn't add range, correct? It this, doesn't add range, it, it just increases your defense, defense roll. It adds to the defense. <laughs> so we're even with the defense. I get a plus one from being stationary, and I get a plus one range on this, but that doesn't matter. Yep, so you activated your legs? Yes. Okay. So yeah, those are cool because in this game there's a lot of moves that can push and pull your, your opponents around. Like your BFC gun, for instance. If you hit people with it, you'll push them all back. So you can tr try to rearrange people and put them into these hazard tokens or smash mechs into each other, causing collision damage. His leg special ability is that he hunkers down and locks into place so he can't be moved. Alright, so he's going to be taking a shot at you, so here's your defense dice. If you have any relevant reaction cards, read through the card because some of them have specific triggers. Whether or not you are dealt damage or... Yeah, there you go. I'm going to play the Trace Buster Reaction. So, play this card only during an opponent's turn. If the unit attacked from more than two hexes away, that attack suffers a minus two penalty. So that's minus two to his die roll. His attack roll, yes. Defense bonuses always go to the defense dice. Attack bonuses always go to the attack dice. Okay, so... Yeah, now do we roll simultaneously? Yeah. Alright. So, the attacker rolled a 9, plus 1 from the aimbot, 10. Defender rolled a 12, plus 2 from... Uh, actually, uh, 11. Right, right, right. But then he gets minus two. From minus this. two from the trace buster. Yep. So that would end up being a miss. So whenever you miss an attack in this game, you increase the battle fervor track by one. Okay. All right. You've spent all of your power. You activated your ability, so you can't move anymore. Is there anything else you'd like to do from your hand, from the cards? 
You can also discard cards whenever you want. Since you redraw up to a total of four at the end of your turn, if you don't like what's in your hand, you can just get rid of them and draw new cards. Uh, not at this time. All right. I'm, I'm, uh... So, you only have three cards, right? So you draw one more card, and that'll be the end of your turn. All right, so, so I'm player two. two. So, I'm going to play Heavy Shelling. So I get to place three tokens around. And then at the beginning of my next turn, they do splash damage around those particular... Yes. Mill effect where the token is sitting and everything around it. So the, the way that works is, say there was... This whole area was full of robots, and you place it right in the middle. None of them moved away when it was their turn, so you got the attack roll on them. You would make one attack roll, and then all the defenders would roll against that roll. Okay. You can stack those as well if you want to be really mean. Oh, okay. So if you can if you can really anticipate where somebody wants to move. Yep. Yeah, those types of attacks are primarily a don't go here move, secondarily a chance of damage. Uh, the cool thing about it is that since this has an initiative system in the game, say you went last on the first round and first on the second round, people would not be able to get out of the way of these. But if I miss these attacks, they don't give me Battle Fervor, correct? No, Battle Fervor is only generated from your mech. Okay. So this is going to be a gigantic mistake, but I want some action, so I am going to move. I'm going to use all my movement. And move three. So, can I activate this BFC more than one time? Mm -hmm. okay. As long as you have the resources, you can use your abilities more than once. Okay. So I'm going to use my Recon Sweeper to give plus one bonus to the attack roll here. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, we're split two hexes, and so yeah, there's two when, ways that I can draw a line When the line rides right between two hexes, it's the attacker's choice. Okay, so I can choose not to give you the cover bonus. Yes. So that's what I'll do, and I'll shoot you here with the BFC. All right. So, let's see. Do I have anything that can help me out? Um, all right, I'm going to play the sidestep card. So since you're attacking me, played this card, I get to move one in any direction. So I'm going to move... Terrain independent? Terrain in the back? Yeah, so can you use that to move on to hexes that would cost two movement? Yes, okay. with this one. Yep, so I'm going to move up on top of this hill. Um, and now I will get the defense bonus from that forest. Okay. But the attack still goes through. So basically you nullified my recon sweeper. Yes. Oh yeah. All right. So that's a miss. So you'll generate one of the battle for points. Right. And then because I've got it out for you for whatever reason, I'm going to shoot with my DSC right. again. Alright, so I rolled a 6. You also I rolled a, a six. 6. I get minus 1, or you get plus 1. Yep, so my total is actually 7, so that's so not a miss. And that's it. So I do get another one here. Yep. And that's it for my turn. Okay, my so turn. So now I draw up to 4. Right? Yes. And now you bring the pain. Yeah. Alright, so I'm going to use one movement to walk forward. Then I'm going to play the quick draw card. Make a free attack roll with any weapon on your mech. This attack roll suffers a minus four to hit. So... And I still get to defend against this, yes. correct? So I rolled an eight, half minus four. I rolled a four. You rolled a nine. That's a missed attack. Now, can I play this with post? You can. So I get to make a free attack against yes. any with my weapon against any attack roll that missed me. Yes. So I get one battle for every point for missing that attack. You get your reaction now. So. And I am going to use my SSC because if my target is adjacent to me, I get a plus one bonus to hit. There you go, and that will eliminate my forest bonus. Okay, so he's standing in the bottom forest, still gives you the bonus. Yeah. So I roll a 10, I roll a 7, so that's another miss. You do get a battle for every point for that. All right. All right, so now I'm going to attack you with 
the laser sword. So my torso has a special ability where if I spend two power on it, my next attack roll, I roll three dice and choose the two highest. My sword has a special ability where if I roll a natural 11 or 12 on the dice, it acts like a critical attack and I can deal a possibility of two damage. So, I'm going to use this little combo, roll three dice and hopefully get fives and sixes. Which I do not, but I still rolled decent enough. So you have to beat a ten. Which I did not do. Alright, so you take one point of damage, so you move that track down by one, and you'll get another battle fervor point for taking a point of damage. Um, now, I don't want to end my turn in this heavy shelling, so I'm going to try to get out of here. Um, I'm going to use my last two power on my rocket booster to boost back here. Um, this allows you to ignore terrain costs as long as you're paying the cost for it. And uh, I will end my turn. So I only have two cards in my hand, so I'll draw two more up. And it's your turn. So is this going to be so strictly skirmish, or you said you're going to add other game modes? Um, you can right now the base set is either free for all or team matches. Okay. But if this is successful, I have lots of ideas for like co-op versus one or co-op versus AI, all sorts of fun stuff later on down the road.